So, Susan, how much weight have you actually lost? I think it's about 90 pounds. Wow. And how long did it take you to lose that? Between a year and a year and a half. Because I've been around the same weight for about seven months now, seven, okay. eight months. Okay, so you've been maintaining. So, how long have you had a weight problem for? When you asked me to think about this, I realized for longer than I had realized. Um, I was a thin child, and then I very suddenly gained weight, like right at the end of high school, beginning of college, and the doctors were actually worried about it. They thought you may have, I might have diabetes or something, and in the end they just, well, maybe it's like a big metabolism shift, and then I lost it very easily. It disappeared again. And when I was around 30, I'd say it had been creeping up very gradually, and then I had this really bad knee injury that took place in my early 30s, and that was enough to sort of tip me over the edge, not being able to do stuff anymore. Before that, I'd been a pretty active person. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for more than 20 years. Okay. And I'm sure you've tried a lot of different programs, I would imagine, to lose the weight in that time. What was it about this time you know, when you came to me, that you were actually able to stick to the plan and lose all this weight? I would say it was the food diary, most of all, which mm -hmm. sounds so incredibly simple and mm -hmm. stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, how could writing things down on a piece of paper make that much of a difference? But for me, it has made a difference. And mm -hmm. I'm, that I'm still doing it after all this time also surprises me. Um, be, but it clearly works. And I also think that I was at such a low point when I came that I just was really, like, I, I could not believe how much weight I had gained, how much I weighed, and that it just didn't seem as though there were any way out of it. Mm -hmm. And I could see that there were health issues that were only getting worse, that were at least partially weight-related, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. somehow, just like the act of coming here, because I, I remember my internist said, yeah, I do think you could turn this around. And you also said, like, yeah, you know, we could probably turn this around. Like, let's just start... Wor Actually, I think you said, let's just start working at it and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really... I don't think I had any expectations. I think I was sort of, like, beaten down low mm -hmm. enough that mm -hmm. I was totally desperate. It was like I was ready to do anything. Mm -hmm. And so you think the food records really helped. Yeah. And where would you say your biggest problem areas were, you know, in terms of your weight? You know, were you an emotional eater? Were you snacking a lot? Snacking it a huge amount, mm -hmm. and um, mostly at night, and mostly in front of the computer or the TV set, mm -hmm. which is still something I have to watch. Right. And were you were you like a sugar person, a salty snack person? Mostly sugar. Um, I could get on binges with potato chips, and so I would try not to even have them in the house, because if I had a, a bag of potato chips, I would eat the entire bag of potato chips, like usually in one sitting. Right, so it's important not to keep any trigger foods in your house. Yeah, I still can't do that. Right, it's still a problem. And would you say, um, you know, how if you you know you were an emotional eater or a snacker, so how are you, how are you not doing that now? You know, how when you have an emotion or stress and you want to eat, how are you curtailing that? Um, I'm trying. First of all, I, I remind myself to. Well, I take a look at what's going on. And the food diary helps that because if I try to write down in my diary right away, like I'm stressing, you know, like this is this is not a good day. Things are, you know, things are heading southward, and I often tell myself, you know, are you really hungry, or are you just not hungry, and this is something entirely different. And I generally do that like thing of having a glass of water, or in my case, water or diet coke, which. Mm -hmm. Like my last great addiction. <laughs> <laughs> I won't take everything away from you. And I know also at your job they have a certain room where they keep lots of candy and cookies and sweets. I know that's a continual problem for you. Um, what are you going to do about that? You know, it's how to stay away from it. Yeah, I think I need to physically try to stay away from it is the one big thing. Which, it makes me a little sad because at the beginning when I was doing this, I just, well, it, at the very beginning, I wouldn't go into that room. I, I did everything I could to avoid that room. And then for a long time, it didn't seem to matter to me, that room. It, it was a non-issue. Mm -hmm. And now that things look good there sometimes, again, I think avoidance and I, I just it's self-awareness. 
right. being aware of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it right. seems to be a big a big help. So being aware of the problem area, which for you is the, the kitchen in your job, where they have all the snacks, so it's staying out of the kitchen. Yeah. Try not even go, to go in there, being aware of it, keep it in your food record. And we also talked about you planting other healthier snacks, like the little mini cheeses and fruit and that type of thing. No, because yeah, I, I do find that if I'm if I am feeling emotionally really stressed out, I do my one of my first reactions is to want to comfort eat, right? To right. do something to comfort myself that involves food, right? And, and that I doesn't go away. That's always there, and we're still working yeah. on that with you. Exactly. I, yes. would, it would, I would love to say that doesn't exist, but that does still exist. So you've been doing food records for how long now? I think it's it's more than two years. That's right. Because August of two thousand and eight. That's so right. It's, Two and almost two and a half years. That's very impressive. Now you also uh, got a pedometer last spring, which I think for you was huge. I love the pedometer. I love the pedometer. Um, one of the one of the main reasons that I didn't try to lose weight was that I had heard and read so much of so many people say, "Well, you have to increase your activity level and decrease your calories." And because I had health issues involving my knees, I knew that I couldn't increase my activity level, so I was just like, well, I guess I can't do it then, so let's give up. So getting the pedometer was really a turning point because like, there was a concrete way for me to tell exactly how much, where my activity level was, and I was shocked to see that it was better than I thought it was, right. and then it got better. And you're averaging, I think it's 7,000 steps, right? A yeah, day? Seven or so plus, yeah, seven thousand is like an average day for me now. That's awesome because two thousand is about one mile or so. So that's really good. So, so the bottom line is you've lost you've lost ninety pounds, mm -hmm. um, and you attribute food records to being a huge part of it. Um, you mentioned being very self aware. Yeah. Um, keep in mind where your trick, what your trigger foods are, where your problem areas are, and coming up with a plan to kind of get around it. Increasing your steps. Um, any last words of advice to help inspire other readers who might be inspired by your 90 pound weight loss? Um, not to give up because I really did not think that I could lose weight mm -hmm. under any circumstances mm -hmm. and I was probably more surprised than anyone when these what seemed to be not very large things you know once we sat down and said what is it that you know what do you eat how do you eat what do you like to eat once there was a plan in place the plan was not particularly onerous. It never has been. The mm -hmm. plan has always been pretty easy. Mm -hmm. I, I was, I mean, you saw my weight loss before I saw my weight loss. And um, I still am surprised. I still look in the mirror sometimes and say, oh my gosh. Or if I, you know, buy something like I have to wear a camisole with this because it's a medium and it's too low cut now. And like now when I buy tops, they're, you, sometimes the medium doesn't fit and I have to buy a small and I go, like, oh my god, you know, like that's not possible. That's huge. Yeah, it is huge. I never thought that would, that those days would come back. So tell me just lastly, what are some of the best things about losing all this weight for you? Feeling good, um, Starting to dress, I didn't realize I was how much I was hiding in my clothes. Um, you pointed that out to me, and then other people pointed it out to me after I stopped doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but I was literally wrapping myself up in clothes that were even bigger than I, they needed to be. You used to wear very big, black, darky, <laughs> black, baggy clothes, and now you dress a lot differently. Yeah, and it's it's been hard, and I'm forcing myself to do it because then there's this huge payoff. It then it feels, it eventually starts feeling really good and then I, again it's like that thing of looking in the mirror or seeing people look at me and I, or and it's just like, whoa, that is that me? And it's a wonderful feeling. That's awesome. And you have also have a lot of health benefits too, right? Yeah, the biggest one, I remember you were so happy, um, was that I stopped taking blood pressure medication after about just over a year mm -hmm. and my doctor was just like so happy. He still is happy. Every time he takes my blood pressure he'll go like, 116 over 70 without medication. That's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> and um, just being able to do more. Right, right. And, and generally feeling so much better. Awesome. Well, you've been a great inspiration, and hopefully you can inspire some of the readers. I hope so, too. Thanks.